is writing SVG code a great job opportunity or a great business opportunity for you in 2020? All right, short answer is no. I think SVG, if you don't know what that is, it's basically writing code that allows you to create uh, vector graphics, graphics that can scale infinitely, kind of like old Flash, old Adobe Flash graphics. So these are solid color graphics, think bar charts, pie charts, basic animations that, well, it could be complex animations. Again, if you're not sure, think about flash animation, that kind of stuff. So SVG is a standard that all the major browsers support, and you can code this with JavaScript, and you can do all kinds of cool things. It's pretty cool, and it is implemented here and there, but uh, let me just say it is uber niche, super niche technology. And so I'm answering somebody's question. They asked me, can you get a job doing SVG programming? Is that a good angle? Do you think, Steph, I really like doing it? Short answer is, I think that the only opportunity you might find doing SVG is if you get into a large organization, a big company, and maybe they have some special project or some subset of a project. Maybe they need to generate pie charts and graphs on the fly and they want to do an SVG. That's the opportunity I would see in that regard. That's pretty much it. I don't expect this video to have too many views. You know, if people, well, I don't get accused too often. If you think I'm a clickbaiter content creator, yes, I do put out some art articles. I do put out some videos that will, uh, in an attempt rather, to generate some traffic. But they're not clickbaity because they don't mislead. A, a clickbaity video is one that misleads, right? Uh, everything that I do is straight up. The title represents the bulk of the content or the point of the video. Uh, here's an example, SVG. I'll be lucky if this video gets 3,000, 4,000 views because who cares about SVG? It's, it's such a niche thing. It's cool tech. I'm not disparaging the technology. I'm not disparaging the programming in SVG. It's just the way it is. It's all driven by business. At the end of the day, coders have to remember that you're writing code because there is a business application. There is a need for that type of coding. That's it. It's not based on the popularity of a language and the popularity or the availability of jobs and the value of the jobs is not dependent on the complexity well, to a certain extent, it can be dependent on the complexity of the language or framework or libraries which you have to be using. But that aside, you need a business application, right? Think about it. You need a business application. That's why I always tell people, do fundamentals, then go and uh, check out, see what job and business opportunities there are out there, and then choose a particular track that interests you, right? So it might be mobile development, it might be web development, it might be WordPress uh, small business development, maybe e-commerce development for, for certain types of companies, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Could be AI. You have to weigh all those factors. So again, let's throw in there personal likes and dislike. If you like certain types of programming, you may want to go in that direction as well. I'll leave uh, you with this. I think uh, to take away from this is, yeah, SVG, niche technology, uh, I don't see very many job opportunities. If you want to mess with, around with it on the side, fine. But again, always look to the market. Always look to the market. Because when you're a beginner, you are, def you are definitely attracted by a particular language or framework or an, an idea. Like A lot of young people like to... Uh, the idea of getting to game programming or they like the idea of doing this type of coding or that type of coding. And that's cool, but what will happen... As you become more experienced, the type of coding you do is less of a factor and the environment, the workplace, the type of work that you're doing in terms of the people you're dealing with, production cycles, that is much more important in terms of your enjoyment uh, in your career. The code becomes secondary, believe it or not. So as an example, you may be somebody who really likes working at very large organizations, very large businesses. Maybe you're somebody who needs that sense of security of 
I just have to do this job. That's all I got to do. I got to work with the big team. And if I just do this, I don't have to worry about anything else. And I just do my job and happy. Give me my check. Bob's my uncle. I go home and I play video games. On the other hand, you may be somebody who doesn't like that environment of the big business and having to deal with all the politics and the office politics, which is inevitable. It's inevitable. Maybe you're more like me. Maybe you're going to go the route of uh, entrepreneur, freelancer, uh, you know, do your own thing. Work on your own stuff. Choose your route. There's pros and cons to both uh, environments. Depends on your personality, et cetera, et cetera. That being said, that choice between corporate environment and on your own freelance environment, whether it be bootstrap startup versus uh, uh, VC funded startup, two different types of businesses, two different types of environments, that is going to be much more important in terms of um, how much you enjoy your career, how much you enjoy your work, rather than whether you're writing it in Python or PHP or not Ruby.